Do you know what a Jansky is? Have you ever wondered why astronomers talk about ergs all the time? Well, you've come to the right place because it's time for Asked and Answered, and I'm going to be tackling our frequently asked questions about units in astronomy. What is CGS? CGS is a unit system that's historically commonly been used by astronomers, and it defines units based on the units for length, mass, and time, and for these it uses the centimeter, the gram, and the second, hence CGS. What is MKS? So MKS is a system that kind of replaced CGS, where it still defines those three units, but now it uses the meter, the kilogram, and the second, hence MKS. How is MKS different from SI? So the SI units is the international system of units, and this is the most commonly used system across the entire world. It's basically the modern version of the metric system. SI does use the meter, the kilogram, and the second, just like MKS. However, these three units alone cannot be uniquely extended to cover electromagnetism. So SI units actually have four additional base units, the ampere for current, the Kelvin for thermodynamic temperature, the mole for the amount of substance, and the candela for luminous intensity. Now these seven base units of SI can be combined to derive any other unit. All of the SI units are actually defined in relation to the seven universal constants, like the speed of light in a vacuum, see, rather than historic units, which were defined a little bit less abstractly. So a good example of this is actually the last unit to be redefined, the kilogram. So up until 2019, the kilogram as a unit specifically referred to the mass of this cylinder that was created back in 1889. But the current definition uses the relation between the Planck constant, the atomic transition frequency of cesium, and the speed of light. What is the CGS unit and the MKS unit and the SI unit? Okay, rather than list all of these out, CGS versus MKS versus SI, let me just put up this chart for you. And you can feel free to pause and look at this as much as you like. What units are used in astronomy? So astronomers do tend to use SI units like many other scientists. Um, however, historically, CGS was the system used by astronomy, and so this still comes up not infrequently. For example, the ERG is the CGS unit for energy, and so you might see that. But astronomy actually does have its own set of official units as established by the International Astronomical Union. This is called the Astronomical System of Units, and it has three base units, the day, the solar mass, and the Astronomical Unit, or AU. Translated into SI, a day is officially 86,400 seconds. A solar mass is 1.98892 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. And an astronomical unit is just under 150 billion meters. This is the actual exact number. Fun fact, the IAU actually officially recommends lowercase au as the abbreviation for astronomical unit, and this has been adopted by the American Astronomical Society and their journals. And every time I submit papers to them, the editors have to go through and change all of mine because I always use capital AU. <laughs> Why do astronomers use astronomical units? Well, one, for convenience, but two, it's actually sometimes easier to measure things in a combination than it is to measure them individually, and this is the case for the universal gravitational constant g and the mass of the sun. But the quantity g times m can be measured much more accurately. So it makes sense to use a unit system where you don't need to have these measured individually, and this is the case for the astronomical unit, or the AU, so historically, astronomers could calculate orbits of the planets much more accurately in AU than they could in meters. How many astronomical units is the Earth from the Sun? Fun fact, because the temptation here is to say one, because historically that was the definition of the astronomical unit, it was the mean distance from the Earth to the Sun. But actually, since 2012, the AU has a very specific length of this amount, about 150 billion meters. And in 2022, the Earth passed its perihelion on January 4th at 0.9833 AU, and will pass its aphelion on July 4th at 1.0167 AU. When was the astronomical unit invented? Well, the basic idea of it, that is, what's the distance between the Earth and the Sun, has been around for millennia. But I think that the actual use of the AU as a unit would kind of date back to Kepler's third law in 1619. This law states that the square of the period is proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis for bodies that are orbiting the same primary. This means that in the solar system, period squared equals semi-major axis cubed if you measure the semi-major axis in AU and the period in years. As to when the specific term astronomical unit was used to refer to this distance, I'm actually not sure, but it seems to be sometime in the late 19th century. You can see this Google engram trend from books. Also, I found a reference that used it with some familiarity in an 1895 textbook. What is a parsec? 
Well, first off, a parsec is a unit of distance. It comes from the term parallax second, but the second here is not referring to time, it's referring to angle, because a parallax second is the distance at which one AU subtends one arc second. You can learn more about parallax and how we measure the distances to stars here, but generally it's a really long way. It's a little over three times 10 to the 16th meters or 206,265 AU, or just over three and a quarter light years. What is a light year? Again, a light year is a unit of distance. It's the distance that light travels in a year. So you basically take the time period of a year and divide by the speed of light. Now, the IAU uses the Julian year length of 365.25 days, which means that a light year is exactly this many meters. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> light years are especially useful for conveying the idea of large distances to non-astronomers, because we know light goes so freaking fast, so imagining how far it can go in a year, you kind of get the idea that it's really, really far. But astronomers actually are more likely to use the parsec. What are the astronomical units of each planet? I assume this means what are the semi-major axes of each planet in AU? In which case there's Mercury at about 0.39 AU, Venus at 0.72 AU, the Earth obviously at 1 AU, Mars at 1.53 AU, Jupiter at just over 5.2 AU, Saturn at 9.54 AU, Uranus at 19.19 .19 AU, and Neptune just over 30 AU. What angle units are used in astronomy? So angles actually are used all the time in astronomy because when we're looking up at things on the sky, we're measuring them relative to one another via angles. Now the SI unit for angle is the radian, which is a dimensionless unit. There are two pi radians in an entire circle, which means that one single radian is about 57 degrees, which is way bigger than any angle you're gonna be doing in astronomy. So astronomers usually use much smaller subdivisions of angle that are based off of degrees. So there are 360 degrees in a circle, and then there are 60 arc minutes in a single degree and 60 arc seconds in an arc minute. This means that there are 1.296 million arc seconds in a circle. And as small as that is, we actually now can get down to measuring things in the micro arc second, which is a millionth of an arc second. Additionally, astronomers use another angle measurement that you might not be as familiar with, which is called a solid angle, which is basically just a two-dimensional angle. It's the measure of field of view. You can kind of think about the top of a cone, right? The round angle within there, although it doesn't have to be that shape. So by adding another dimension, we're going from a circle now to a sphere. So the SI unit for solid angle is called a steradian, and there are four pi steradians in a sphere. But again, astronomers are more likely to use smaller angles, so usually you might see square arc minutes or square arc seconds. What are the units of brightness in astronomy? So historically, astronomers have used something called magnitudes to measure brightness. Now, magnitudes are a unitless quantity. It's basically a logarithmic quantity that compares relative brightness between stars. So brightness is just the amount of energy per time reaching us over a certain area. So you can measure the amount of energy that your telescope has received in a given amount of time, and you know the collecting area of your telescope, so you can calculate a brightness. So in SI units, that would be joules per second per meter squared or watts per meter squared. But brightness isn't usually uniform across all wavelengths of light, so it's common to see astronomers actually measure brightness per wavelength, which means that the unit is going to be watts per meter squared per hertz. For example, there's a unit commonly used in radio astronomy called a Jansky, and a Jansky is just 10 to the minus 26 watts per meter squared per hertz. Just to make things even more fun, if you're measuring the brightness of something that has extent across the sky, you can actually measure the surface brightness, which is just the brightness per solid angle. This is commonly measured in magnitudes per square arc second or megajanskys per star radian, which is 10 to the minus 20 watts per meter squared per hertz per star radian. <laughs> when to use what units in astronomy? There's not really a one right answer for this. So SI units are really great in their commonality. And so yes, we use them quite a lot, but they don't always make sense. They can be orders of magnitude different from what you're kind of dealing with. And now people naturally make this sort of switch between units all the time. For example, we usually give the age of babies in weeks or months, while as adults, we usually give our ages in years or sometimes even decades. And all the while, the SI unit of time is the second, but when was the last time someone told you their age in seconds? Similarly, astronomers vary what units they're using based on kind of what scales they're talking about. So you might have really, really large distances between galaxies, but also when you're talking about light, the wavelength of light is really, really tiny. 
So maybe you're going to use megaparsecs for those long distances and angstroms or nanometers for those very small distances. Also, different subfields within astronomy have different conventions about what units they commonly use. For example, in my field in exoplanets, we use AU all the time because AU is the scale of planetary and stellar systems. Also, although the solar mass is the only one that's actually identified as an official unit in the astronomical system of units, it's very common to use the sun's value as a reference unit. For example, 1 L sun is the luminosity of the sun, and you can use that as a unit for your luminosity. This can extend to other known values. For example, it's common to see Jupiter masses or Earth masses when dealing with planets. These types of units are usually denoted by the letter of the value you're considering, along with the astronomical symbol of the known object, like the circle with a dot for the sun, or the circle with a cross for the Earth, or sometimes just the letter of the object, like a J for Jupiter. And in general, it's okay to use basically whatever unit you feel like, as long as you are communicating clearly what that unit actually is. But it's certainly best to use the units that people are going to be familiar with in that context if you want them to have a kind of intuitive understanding. For example, I could tell you that I am 6'4", or that I'm 76 inches, or that I'm 194 centimeters, or that I'm 1.94 centimeters, and those are all the same within rounding, but they might mean different things to some of you than to others. They might have better intuitive sense. Hopefully that cleared up some of your questions about the units that we use in astronomy. Let me know if you have any more questions or if you have another topic that you'd like me to tackle and ask and answer. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye.